they took the FBI figures for the size of the crater, which was 28 feet across, 6.8 feet deep, and said to generate a crater that size, it would require 4,000 pounds of TNT. TNT is a standard, sort of a standard measure against which you measure everything else. So we're taking 4,000 pounds of TNT, and these areas are proportional to weights. So if this is 4,000 pounds of TNT, it would have taken 14,800 pounds of AFNO to give you the same blast equivalence in a two-and-a-half-ton truck. <laughs> so that's, that's just totally incompatible. Now this chart shows the building as it was cleaned up before they permitted the, uh, the defense counsels to go through with their technical experts. All the evidence had been, been removed. You see, this column back in here, this is the second row of columns, 35 feet from the front. So all the columns from the front had been removed down to the stub, into the ground. And the same thing, this one back in the middle is gone, but it was standing up here to the third floor. I'll show you, for, show you in a few seconds. And uh, here is the second floor. This is all the air conditioning unit, but on the second floor from here over to the other side is where all the children were in, in, in that nursery. The ATF had their weapons arsenal up in the top and, and their offices up there. Uh, here is the top. See the rebar? Three of those one and three quarters inch uh, rebars come all over here. And here's the top that was up in the, in, in the uh, transfer beam, right at this end. Well, it's red, and when you cold work steel in a demolition charge, with a demolition charge, you cold roll it, or you cold work it, it gets very hot, you remove most of the protective coatings, and it'll rust very, very quickly. Now, you can see that that is already turning brown. It's not turned brown anywhere else, but it was apparently cold work to me. All of this is not, is, is structural failure from all the floors hammering down one after another, coming from fairly great heights. If you look at the way this collapsed, and the next column over collapsed pretty much the same way. Now, the FEMA, and I'll show you, it collapsed pretty much the same way. Now, FEMA said that the next column over was destroyed by Bruson, so nobody had really seen it. It had just really turned to dust and disappeared. Well, all the rebar would have still been there, right? Now, there's something very peculiar about craters. When you have a truck load of explosives going off on concrete or asphalt, uh, you have something that is very characteristic. You see, here you have, this is a picture in London of a truck bomb, and you have this shelf sticking out over the hole because when the bomb goes off, you can ram this clay and dirt way down below back. It's, I wouldn't say it's uh, compressive, but you do move it back. It's plastic. And you can't move it back like you do the concrete. So the rim of the concrete and asphalt always sticks out over the hole. And in the crater that you see in Oklahoma, you don't have it. Now, there's something else very significant. This place is the, point, is the closest point to the transfer beam and to the column. That column B5, is A5, is still covered here. But you see the transfer beam, and this is the bottom of the beam that would have been looking right down at that truck. Do you see any spall or damage on the bottom of that beam? Or over here? That's the, probably the closest point that you, you would find to that uh, truck. Now here's, here is really the telltale ovens. Here is column A5. So they've cut off the rebar. It's been cut off. That's what they did in getting rid of all this stuff in the cleanup process. There's column B4. B4. And this is the second floor level. Second floor level. So this is down below the second floor level. Now, this is the closest point of contact to where they said the truck was. Do you see any spall? Do you see any broussants? It's not even spa. So something came down and covered that before the truck bomb went off. Now, you know, there's a tremendous amount of witnesses, and I'm, I'm not going into all that, but there's two so many witnesses who testified that they, of all the rumbling and the shaking of the building and the rolling of the floors uh, several seconds before the blast went off that blew in all the glass. Now, here's A7, which came down out toward the street. Uh, you can see the kind of damage you have. That's the kind of damage you'd get from a small demolition charge. It's not the kind of damage you'd get from a Bruce from a big charge. It's a small, localized demolition charge kind of a thing. Now, we know that they pulled out 
five, five, no, three five-gallon cans of fulminated mercury, which is a booster, and you can tie that together with Primacord without doing anything else, and Primacord will set uh, that off because it is a booster material. Three five-gallon tank cans were pr they were pressure sensitive. We had pressure sensitive fuses on them that failed to go. It was also so testimony. I talked to the individual who reported that and saw that personally. There was also a two foot by two foot by two foot box that had a, a fuse system on it to go off 10 minutes after the others, and it was taken out. And one of these devices was taken out of the building, and this is a, a, a device that was designed specifically, it's a standard military unit, to take out bridge piers, railroad bridge piers or major, major piers. And you can see it's only a 35 pound, 35 pound device, but you have a shape charge with a follow through charge, which goes in and blows up, and that's the kind of damage you can get to a very, very large pillar. And that small device would have done the job. When I went to uh, Oklahoma and testified before the grand jury, I was asked for some more information before they really called me down there, and I sent them about two inches worth of material, and I put a, a, a long letter on it. And the judge, who was over that grand jury down there when he set up, he said, uh, this, is, this was in the August 97 Media Bypass magazine, states the following, Judge Burkett told the grand jurors not to accept hearsay. Hearsay evidence is permitted in grand jury hearings. How else do you identify the people who you want to call as witnesses? And that charge was illegal because Oklahoma law authorizes you to call in the uh, hearsay, uh, use the hearsay evidence in, in identifying witnesses. Only those witnesses who would present facts, which if true, would substantiate an indictable offense and not, and not needlessly delay the courts and the other functions by listening to radical persons or facts about which you could do nothing even if they were true. <laughs> so, I, I, in, in the report that I sent back, I suggested that they, under no conditions, under no conditions except any judicial restrictions, that they did not appeal. When the bomb went off in Oklahoma, President Clinton said, who was responsible? The generators of hate. Who are the generators of hate? The Christian right. Talk show host. Probably me and thee. And uh, the Christian right and the talk shows and the militia were the real bad guys. So the generators of hate, we knew who the administration said they were. And they've been, an, they've been undergoing an effort to try to modify things in this country to change the target population. And I'll get into that a little later. But the first thing is the control of public opinion. And we have that going on today. And the mainline media in this country is up to the ears in the control of public opinion. Lenin said, and he said it, he said, Several hundred thousand businessmen and professionals and industrialists are no threat to a revolution. But 10 million armed and independent farmers are a terror to revolution. Now, they have got to disarm the American people before they move to the next step, the period of escalating violence. Well, they tried to do it with the counterterrorism legislation. They did a certain amount with the uh, Brady Bill. But they're still working at it. And you're going to find more terrorist activities and more things to establish a public outcry to disarm the American people. But then the third thing was get control of the oil in the Middle East. I, I'm very fearful that you're going to see something happen there before, before too long.